The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 12 of your distance learning session for Geology Opposite Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. Our lesson 12 is titled Stratigraphic Contacts. The lesson overview includes correction of assignment, outcomes, previous knowledge, problem situation, activities, summary, exercises, and we shall end our lesson with an assignment. In a problem situation of our last lesson, we ended up sending a student to the field and we were given a passage that was discovered by a student in the field. So as our assignment, we saw that a student in the Manfe Basin, Southwest Cameroon, recalled while in the field that the carbon-19 or the carbon-nitrogen dating method have a relative uh, short half-life making it useful for dating recent formations. She observed that the basin is richer in detrital sedimentary rocks. The questions we were supposed to answer after looking through this uh, 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 extract that this lady discovered in the field were, one, to name the parent isotope for the analysis of the radioactivity. The common parent isotope is the carbon-14, while the name of the radiogenic product is nitrogen-14. That is why she recalled of the carbon-nitrogen dating method. Now, we are we're equally expected to state the half the half life of the dating method. Of course, the half life of this dating method is so recent and short. That is 5,730 years. This we said that it is used in dating recent sediments, recent uh, 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 materials that have been laid down geologically. We are equally uh, required to name the minerals and the materials in which the parent isotope occurred in. Of course, we say that this kind of method can be used to date recent information. So, organic, mat uh, organic matter, like you have horns, you have peat, which is a form of gold or of coal. We have glacier and we have uh, groundwater. We are equally required to state the effective age range of the radioactive uh, method. That is of a range of 0 to 80,000 years. Very, very, very short half-life, which can be used to date recent information. The outcomes of this lesson require that we will be able to define stratigraphic contacts, conformities, and unconformities 
at the end of our lesson. We will also be able to list, describe, and illustrate the types of conformable and unconformable contacts. Take note that we are dealing with conformable beds and unconformable beds, as well as conformable contacts and unconformable contacts. You take note. These are the different aspects and values we shall be required to attain at the end of this lesson. Um, previously, we saw the different geologic uh, dating methods. We ended with our last lesson talking on radiometric and non-radiometric dating methods. And through those uh, lessons, we have been able to state and explain the problems and errors of the radiometric dating methods. We have also been able to state the characteristics of radiometric dating methods, as well as state and explain the main known radiometric dating methods. Now, for our lesson of today, we will observe the photo of an outcrop that I was taken during field work. Why we observe? We want to provoke a situation that will help us to go through our lesson and to resolve it in the course of our lesson. So you take note of what the geologists observed in the field. A geologist observed the above rock formations during field work and uh, took a photograph for a research institute. Question. Which geological concept is, is suitable for effective exploration of geology of this area where the photograph was taken? Reflect and try to build up concepts that will assist in the learning of geology in this environment. Yes, somebody says we need to look at the vertically continu uh, continuous and interrupted deposition. It's a proposal. We need to know the rate of deposition. It's another proposal. And we need to know the degree of weathering and erosion. As we go through our lesson, we will, look at, we will look at each of the responses that are suitable to properly exploit the geology of this area from the photo that was taken by a geologist during field work. Now you observe this diagram that shows stratigraphic contacts. As you observe, you will try to deduce what you see. Take note of the rock sequences. Look at the way they are oriented in the session. Look at the different structures that are involved. And equally, areas where you have some contacts. Take note that some are continuous and others are discontinued, bringing different series in the area. This guides us to the notion of stratigraphic contacts. Stratigraphic contacts. These are contacts that separate different stratigraphic units from each other. Again, stratigraphic contacts are contacts that separate different stratigraphic units from each other. They are 
plain or irregular surfaces separating different rock layers from our diagram that we are just from seeing you realize that each of these layers are separated from each other and in such contacts others are what irregular and others are regular that helps us for proper understanding of the stratigraphic contacts the vertical superposed strata these are strata that help us to understand the way the structure of an area could be it a cliff could be it an outcrop could be it a, a, a pit could be it a quarry when we observe carefully we will realize that they are partitioned into two we have conformable strata and we have unconformable strata conformable strata Conformable strata are strata of unbroken depositional sequence. Again, conformable strata are strata of unbroken depositional sequence. This means that the rocks are deposited horizontally, undisturbed. The layers are found one above the other. Also, the surface separating conformable beds form a conformity. For example, we have bedding planes. We have unconformable strata. Unconformable strata are strata that do not succeed on the line beds in immediately other of age. It meaning there is a kind of disorder. So these contacts are contacts between beds that will end up forming unconformities. Unconformities are the irregularities. And these irregularities indicate distractions or distortion in the sequence of deposition in the geology of an area. There are interruptions in deposition and therefore they will help to justify why we define them as unconformable strata. We have different types of stratigraphic contacts. Remember in our lesson, we are insisting for you to draw a difference between conformable uh, 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 strata and conformable contacts or stratigraphic or uh, stratas and stratigraphic contacts. Therefore, we have two types of stratigraphic contacts. We have contacts between conformable beds and contacts between unconformable beds. We begin with contacts between conformable beds. These are contacts that form unconformities or that form conformities. We take it all over. Contacts between conformable beds will form conformities. They have abrupt or graduational contacts. We shall look at what abrupt and graduational contacts uh, uh, mean. Abrupt contacts are contacts that occur from sudden and distinct changes in rock types. Again, note that the key words here are the fact that they are sudden and they are distinct during changes in deposition. They equally involve, uh, 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 corres uh, they correspond to primary depositional bedding planes. Again, remember that abrupt contacts correspond to primary depositional bedding planes. They represent minor breaks in depositional conditions called diatoms. You will take note that diatoms will simply, will simply be the minor breaks 
that are involved in depositional conditions during the laying down of the different beds in geological uh, rock formation. We have an illustration of an abrupt contact. We look at this, you will realize that bed A, bed B, bed C transit to each other with very sharp contacts. These sharp contacts form our bedding planes. And when you look at the distribution between A, B, and C, or the contacts between A, B, and C, we said that these breaks are called die, uh, die stems. But remember that just the contact between A and B is a bedding plane. Whereas when you take that for the whole rock body with separation of one rock, one rock layer to another, you call that die stems. <laughs> Graduational contacts. Graduational contacts are contacts that occur when the change uh, from one rock type into another is gradual. There are no sharp contacts any longer. That is the reason why the name graduational contacts. And these contacts reflect graduational changes in the conditions of the position of sediments during the laying down of strata in geologic events. If you look at this diagram, you will realize that in graduational contacts, you cannot make a big difference between this layer and the next layer. The graduational, the, 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 the transition is gradual and there are no sharp breaks as compared to abrupt contacts. Contacts between unconformable beds. The contacts between unconformable beds will involve the surfaces separating unconformable beds and they give rise to unconformities. Very important. This is the backbone of our topic of discussion, which is referred to as stratigraphic contacts. If we do not have unconformities, then our study of strata will remain at sedimentary petrology. But it extends to stratigraphic contacts because of the presence of unconformities. And these unconformities bring irregularities, they bring distortion, Given that geologic events are ongoing, they were, they are ongoing, and they will continue to be there in as much as they are naturally related. The unconformities. Want to know what an unconformity is? An unconformity is a surface of erosion, weathering, or non-deposition which separates younger beds from the older beds. We take it all over. An unconformity is a surface of erosion, weathering, or non-deposition, which separates younger beds from the older beds. We want to emphasize here that the key word is an erosional surface or a weathering surface, or a non-depositional surface. It is different from a gap. So the key word that we are going to be using along is surface or a break. Take note, we are not talking about a gap. Unconformities, therefore, are the unconformity will represent a substantial break in the rock record that may correspond to periods of erosion, weathering, or non-deposition lasting millions or hundreds of millions of years ago. That is why they are put within the geologic uh, 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 life uh, span. Unconformities are defined based on one, time, 
two, deposition, three, structure. So in our definition, if you want to approach unconformities, we must take note of the time factor, of the depositional factor, and of the structures that will show thereafter. Based on time, unconformities refer to a period of non-deposition of sediments. It is seen in keys of geologic maps when time period had been eliminated. We have to take care that this uh, stratigraphic contacts quickly reflect and guide the draw up of geological maps. For example, a rock sequence from Palozoic to tertiary and to quaternary implies that the Mesozoic had been omitted. That is an indication of a nonconformity with respect to time. Based on deposition, an unconformity is a small or a large interruption in deposition. So when you see interruptions within a geological sequence, like our the picture of the diagram that we had at the beginning, it is an indication of a nonconformity with respect to deposition. Based on structure, a nonconformity is an erosional and weathering surface, separating older beds from younger beds. We must be sensitive here that we are talking about separation based on weathering, which is simply the gradual on the spot loosening of the rocky substratum. Erosion, which will have to do with mobilization, picking up and displacement of those materials that have been weathered. As a result, they create contacts. Thereafter, there is deposition, which creates a discontinuation in the way of laying down of the materials. Now, at the beginning of our lesson, we did evoke a situation, and it was problematic. We said that in a few work, there was a snapshot and it was taken to a research institute for exploration. And we're looking for the possible geologic areas that should be exploited for the geology of the area to be clear enough. Our proposals were that the vertical, continuous, and the interrupted deposition should be used as a means. And we say yes. Because alongside our lesson, we have been talking about continuation, interruption, disruption, which will guide us to either distinct between conformable beds and non-conformable beds, or conformable strata and non-conformable strata, as well as conformable contacts and unconformable contacts. Now, our second proposal was to look at the rate of deposition. The rate of deposition could be yes but the sequence of event already happened and we are observing a picture the geology has already been laid down so the rate of deposition may not help us rate of deposition can only help us if we are talking about transportation of materials where we can be looking at the distance of transport then degree of weathering and erosion are activities that ought to have taken place before the area that is under study. Therefore, the last two uh, proposals are discarded. Summarily, stratigraphic contacts are contacts that separate different stratigraphic units from others. Why vertically superposed strata include conformable and unconformable strata? Stratigraphic contacts include contacts between conformable beds, as well as contacts between unconformable beds. We will look at some exercises that will guide us in the learning, or, uh, that will guide us to know exactly what we have been able to acquire. Exercise number one: different stratigraphic units are separated from others by 
A. Breaks. B. Limit. C. Contacts. D. Bedding planes. As you reflect, remember we are talking about stratigraphic units. Our correct answer is C. Contacts. That is the reason why our topic has been stratigraphic contacts. Exercise number two. Match the following, the following correctly to relate stratigraphic contacts and their meaning. On the table, we have contacts and we have definitions. The first is graduational contact. And the second is diastem. Then the third is abrupt contacts. The definitions, minor breaks in the position. We have sudden and distinct change in rock layers. Then see graduational change from one rock type to the other. As you reflect, remember that questions like this are questions to test our knowledge of the subject matter. The answer, we have the, pro the first proposal 1A, 2B, and 3C. Then the second proposal, 1C, 2A, 3B. Then C, 1B, 2C, 3A. D, 1B, 2A, 3C. Our correct answer is B, 1A, 2, 1C, 2A, 3B. If we get back to the table, you will realize that 1 corresponds to Graduational contacts. Why two correspond to a minor break? Why uh, uh, no two correspond to a minor break? Why three correspond to B, which is sudden and uh, distinct changes in rock layers? Now the assignment we are going to do at home. You are going to observe this. rock sequence at home and from the rock sequence above you will identify and define one a conformable strata two an unconformable strata three a conformable contact and four an unconformable contact we have come to the end of our lesson 12 our next lesson will be on stratigraphic contacts and the focus will be on types of unconformities. See you in our next class.